Good morning. Now on Good Day, the Raiders Stadium is just a few years from being done. We'll tell you where the progress stands today on this enormous project. Plus two deadly shootings at the same North Las Vegas home. We hear from residents who fear it could happen again. And things really heating up this week across Southern Nevada. Sherry has more details on the excessive heat watch in your Weather Now forecast. 8 News Now Good Day, the Valley's news leader, starts right now. Now, live, this is 8 News Now Good Day. Happy Monday morning. I'm Nia Wong, and for Kirsten Joyce. I'm John Langler. It's 5 o'clock. Kirsten, uh, as, as you mentioned, is not here today. Mm -hmm. She'll be back hopefully tomorrow. Uh, beautiful weekend, but hot. Yes. And dusty, especially on Sunday. Very windy, kind of grimy. Yeah, which is why I stayed inside. Stayed <laughs> so. inside a little bit. Sherry, though, uh, is here to tell us about another heat uh, heat up that's coming on the way. My English is awesome this morning. <laughs> Stellar. Stellar uh, English. Yeah, this weekend enjoyed a little bit of a cool down. We had a break in the heat thanks to all that wind that came through. Unfortunately, that uh, provided a lot of opportunity to clean up the yard, the pool, and all of that. Beautifully clear, a little bit of a sliver of moonlight left out there, not much. So we dropped from low triple digits to upper 90s. Not a huge drop, but maybe you noticed it. 11% humidity. Uh, you'll notice that it's going to stay hot and dry as we get through the week. Good sunshine today. Temperatures increasing with a ridge of high pressure that's going to drive those temps right back up to triple digits, but they're not going to stop in the low triple digits. We'll get through the 90s in the morning, mid 90s early afternoon, and 102 for your Monday. Back above normal, and we do have excess heat watches again this week. We'll talk about it in just a few minutes. 501. Let's get you out the door, but you got to hear what Nate has to say first. Good morning, Nate. Good morning, Sherry. We're moving right along, even with a crash reported on the Southern 215 Beltway on ramp from Durango. Our camera there shows the ramp appears to be clear, and the freeway itself is certainly doing fine, even if there were something there. But keep an eye out on the Southern 215 Beltway on ramp from Durango. The rest of the freeway system early on your Monday morning, still looking pretty good. We do expect things to start crowding up there in the spaghetti bowl, and we'll keep you posted. John, Nia. Nate, thank you. Professional football still a few years from coming to Las Vegas, but the new stadium for the Raiders is really taking shape. A lot of steels going up, and the walls, you can already see them from the I-15. Hector Mejia joins us live near the construction site with an update on the massive project. Good morning, Hector. Good morning, Nia and John. So crews right now are in the phase where they're starting to build the structure for the second level of the stadium. And you can see the cranes out there behind me and a beautiful sunrise. And just about now is when the first round of workers of the hundreds of workers working on the project start showing up, actually. And we do have pictures of what the massive construction site looks like from the air. Pictures shared by the construction crews. We're almost exactly two years from completion of the $1.8 billion stadium. And it's actually ahead of schedule. The stadium bowl has taken its shape. The footprint and radius is also pretty clear and they have as much progress in eight months as the new Los Angeles football stadium has had in 14 months. A lot has to do with the Vegas crew being able to blast into the ground, whereas the LA crew had to dig everything out. And they're actually growing the natural grass outside. It'll be moved in and out between games. The Oakland Raiders plan to move to Las Vegas in 2020, and they'll have that brand new stadium with 65,000 seats. And in just a few months in September, actually, is when it'll look more like a stadium and less like a big old construction site. And crews are actually showing up right now. Uh, 400 workers, we're told, are on site uh, on any given day. Reporting live near the I-15 in Russell, Hector Mejia, 8 News Now. Hector, thank you very much. Metro Police this morning is looking for the suspect connected to a deadly shooting over the weekend. Officers found the victim near Twain and Paradise. Details this morning are still limited, but if you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers. Henderson police arrested two teenage boys accused of murdering another teen. Police say they tried to stop a car driving recklessly near Sunset and Green Valley. That was on Friday night. The car crashed with several teens running away from the scene. Henderson police later arrested them and learned the car had been stolen. They also learned about a possible murder during the investigation. Police later found a boy's body in an abandoned home near Eastern and Sunridge Heights. The two teens are both facing charges for that murder. North Las Vegas police are investigating two deadly shootings at the same house 
hours apart from each other. The home near North Las Vegas Boulevard and Cary is where it all happened. North Las Vegas police says both murders are related. And you see there, it's the shooting of a scene of a shooting that took place Saturday where a 24-year-old man was killed. The first shooting happened on Friday. One person was killed, two others were injured. Neighbors want answers. We don't live in the greatest part of town, but nothing usually happens around here. And to wake up twice to uh, horrifying news, it's, it's very concerning. It worries me that it could happen again. It worries me that it could happen in my complex. Police have not made any arrests in either of those shootings, but if you have any information, again, please call Crime Stoppers. A late night police pursuit ends with an officer shooting the suspect. It happened at a gas station near Blue Diamond and Valley View Saturday morning. Metro police say detectives were trying to arrest a robbery suspect when that suspect tried to get back to his car and take off. A viewer shared this video with us the moment police opened fire. This whole place was filled with nothing but uh, SUV cops and then undercover detectives with their lights in the windows. You know, they were coming in. Uh, but the helicopter, it, it, it circled for at least 20 minutes before I heard at least eight shots go off. Police say they found a gun in the suspect's vehicle. A woman in the car also taken into custody. This is the seventh officer involved shooting in Metro's jurisdiction this year. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says car crashes are the number one killer of Nevada teenagers. A local nonprofit is working to steer young drivers towards safer driving habits. I like to call this group, it's, the, it's never going to happen to me. They, they're all young drivers, um, you know, they're never going to get hurt. They need to realize that driving a car is a privilege, it's not a right, and it's also an awesome responsibility. The program is called Driver's Edge. It's free for drivers up to 21 years old as long as they have a driver's license or a driver's permit. It'll be up and running again in the fall. Serving up smiles for those in need. Over the weekend, more than 130 homeless and low-income Nevadans had their teeth checked at a free dental clinic. The Buddhist Su Chi Foundation, which is a volunteer organization dedicated to medicine and education, partnered with the Salvation Army to provide cleanings, extractions, and fillings. One homeless man we spoke with says this means more than just a medical checkup. Makes you feel good. That means that it's people that do care about you and the community and the lower income people. This is the third year both organizations have teamed up to do this. Around 90 volunteers made it all possible. This week, the Cosmopolitan and some top employers across Southern Nevada are putting together a career fair for local veterans, military spouses, and family members. There will be 50 local employers on hand. Just bring copies of your resume. It'll be from 10 in the morning till noon on Wednesday. Summer is here, and that means watering the grass more often. Sherry explains how you can cash in on your lawn in her Living Green segment. Plus, a memorable night at the Tonys. We'll go through the winners, the losers, and the controversial moment that's now trending on 8 News Now.
Well, the hotter days are here, and you're watering more to keep your lawn green. I know you are. That costs more, too. So if you're interested in getting rid of that expensive water-thirsty grass, right now is a great time because rebate rates have increased. So that's the best time to get the biggest payback for cashing in your lawn. The Southern Nevada Water Authority will pay you to convert your turf lawn to a water-smart landscape, and they've increased the rebate rates to their highest ever at $3 per square foot. Now, the incentive, it's hard to resist. Not only are you making money on the grass that you're removing, but you'll also be saving roughly 55 gallons of water per square foot every year. So that's the savings on your water bill. But before you go ripping up your lawn, you must apply for the rebate and get your conversion areas reviewed and approved with an on-site visit by the Water Authority. So after you're approved, SNWA can help you with landscape installation ideas, or they can give you a list of professional contractors if you don't want to do it yourself, and even help you choose the right plants for your designs. So after you complete your converted landscape, you'll receive your cash rebate, plus the water savings on your water bill month after month. It's very important, I can't stress enough, that you apply either online or call 702-258-SAVE and get a printed hard copy to apply. Either way, then send it in for your on-site and, and wait for your on-site inspection before digging. So now we have the link. Uh, to apply for your rebate on our website, lasvegasnow.com. It has so much great information on how to do this. Uh, they have uh, right now converted over 185 million square feet. Oof. I think that's millions. I can square imagine feet. The, the savings on yes, that. Yes, and saving uh, billions of gallons of water in the Las oh, Vegas Valley. So yeah, I mean we've just we've we've really um, enjoyed the savings. It's been one of the biggest conservation efforts that we've made in Southern Nevada to save water. Save yourself money, save us all water, can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, especially I, this time. Yeah, and get some good money back too. Three dollars a square foot. Love that. All right, beautifully clear. It is gonna be hot this week, so if you do have a grass lawn, boy, you're going to have to probably increase the watering a little bit and make sure that you're not watering between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Those really hot hours of the day completely waste water through evaporation. Plus, it's not good for your lawn when it's so hot. It burns the grass. It does. Lots of 70s out there this morning. Enjoy the 70s because as the afternoons heat up, the mornings will definitely get warmer as well. We've got some 60s in Pahrump. To Red Rock this morning, low 70s Mesquite, Boulder City, 81 in Laughlin, and 60s in Kingman. So the west, at least the desert southwest, will stay dry and keep heating up. Showers over the Pacific Northwest with that cold front that brought us the wind over the weekend. And those showers are going to keep rolling into the Rockies, the Midwest, all through the Ohio Valley. They had some really good uh, rain and, uh, unfortunately, flooding through the Midwest over the weekend. We have excessive heat watches again. Remember a week ago today, we also had excessive heat warning. We had 107 for our hottest day of the year. We're going to approach those kinds of numbers again tomorrow into Wednesday. In fact, uh, valley temps will be 105 to maybe 112 might be more like 110. The models keep kind of going back and forth, but it's going to be hot and along the uh, Colorado River Valley. Um, it could be up to 115, so that's for Tuesday, Wednesday. Then we're watching what's Hurricane Bud down here off the coast of Mexico, and as it now travels uh, through the course of the week up over Baja, it looks like the moisture will go to the east of us. So Kingman, you could be in for some rain uh, starting Friday into the weekend, but for the valley, we're going to keep it dry, but definitely cooler. So 102 today, 80 up on the mountain, and then as we get through the week, the numbers climb for the next couple of days, 106, 107, and again, that's just the official number, so east and north valley neighborhoods are going to be hotter. Then we trend down through the rest of the week and even look to 90s for the weekend and to celebrate dad uh, through Sunday. So that's a little bit better. All right, flashing lights, 515. Let's ask Nate what that means.
Uh, there is a crash uh, near the Town Square shopping center. It uh, looks worse than it is. Uh, it looks like a car went up on the center median and went several feet along the median. At least three NHP troopers taken away the left lane. This is southbound Las Vegas Boulevard. I think it's past the 215, but it might be on the north side. Bottom line, there are some uh, lane restrictions. Just keep an eye out and follow the flashing lights and to get around it. Rest the freeway system early on your Monday morning. Looking real good. A little bit of slowing way up on the northern 215 beltway uh, as you get off the I-15. Otherwise, that's about it. We'll keep an eye on it for you all morning long. John, Nia. Thanks, Nate. The Best of Broadway came together for the Tony Awards last night. Laura Podesta reports on the controversial moment now trending. Students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School took center stage at last night's Tony Awards. The survivors of the Parkland School shooting that killed 17 of their classmates and teachers performed Seasons of Love from Rent. What a thrill to be in the same house as those amazing children. Weren't they marvelous? And oh, Marsha When the envelopes were opened, the band's visit ended as the night's big winner, taking home 10 awards, including Best Musical. The play is about members of an Egyptian police orchestra who accidentally end up in the wrong Israeli town. Tony Shalhoub and Katrina Leng both nabbed Tonys for their leading roles. And this filled my stupid little heart with so much joy. It was a good night for two-part plays. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child took home six awards, including Best Play. And a revival of Tony Kushner's Angels in America won three big awards, including acting trophies for Andrew Garfield and Nathan Lane. I'm standing here because Tony wrote one of the greatest plays of the 20th century. And it is still speaking to us as powerfully as ever in the midst of such political insanity. The most controversial part of the evening is already trending on social media. When Robert De Niro attacked President Trump using a word that had to be silenced for viewers at home. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Tina Fey's Mean Girls and SpongeBob SquarePants each had 12 nominations, but Mean Girls failed to win an award. SpongeBob SquarePants won just once. Back here in the Valley, the Intergalactic Art Car Festival took place in downtown Las Vegas, featuring a collection of art cars dressed as monsters, cartoon characters, and aliens. The festival was raising money for local art programs, collected about $20,000. Lyft partnered with Fired Up Management to throw the event. They covered the cost for 10,000 tickets to make it free for everyone. An NFL star from Las Vegas is giving back to his hometown. Brandon Marshall held a youth football camp on Saturday. And then yesterday, the Broncos linebacker held his second annual kickball tournament, all to benefit cerebral palsy treatment and the Nuffshead Urban Mentoring Program here in Las Vegas. The former Cimarron Memorial star said it's all about bringing the community together. Man, never forget my roots. Um, this is something that I've always wanted to do as far as you know giving back and um, you know creating some fun for the community. So you know I'll always be here, man, doing things because it's my home and it's where I came from, it's what made me. It's dope, man. I want to get the community involved instead of maybe having like a celebrity basketball game where all they could do is just watch. You know, I want to get the community involved and get the feel that they could play with us uh, and against us, man. And I think it's better that way. I feel like Marshall will be a pretty darn good kickball player. <laughs> He's entering his sixth season with the Broncos. He's also invested time and money to help the Denver community as well. Airbnb is expanding one of their programs. Yeah, we'll tell you what hosts can do with their homes in case a disaster strikes. Plus, Sonic is releasing several brand new slushies today, just in time for summer. summer. Some of them are amazing. Others, <laughs> maybe not so much. We'll tell you all about it next on 8 News Now. Good day. <laughs>
You're watching the Valley's News Leader with Kirsten Joyce, John Langler, Sherry Swensk, and Nate Tannenbaum. This is 8 News Now. Good day. Neutrality rules expire today. And Airbnb is helping those when a disaster strikes. Diane King Hall, live on Wall Street. Good morning to you, Diane. Happy Monday. react to a lot of geopolitical things uh, occurring right now. So uh, this would be the chance to react following this weekend's uh, tension-filled G7 uh, summit in Canada. But I want to give you a quick recap of Friday's uh, closing levels. The Dow gained 75 points, the Nasdaq added 10. Futures have been flip-flopping this morning. Net neutrality is now officially a thing of the past. In December, the Republican-led FCC voted to repeal the Obama-era rules requiring Internet service providers to treat all content equally. The repeal takes effect today. Critics counter internet service providers will now have too much control over the flow of online content. And Airbnb is stepping up efforts to help in the event of an emergency such as a natural disaster. The company is now allowing hosts to sign up in advance to provide free shelter for evacuees or refugees under its open houses program. The idea of this is this will shorten the critical response time for hosts and evacuees to connect in the aftermath of a crisis. Nia and John? Diane, sounds like a really simple idea. All right, now let's talk about something that is a, a good dill. What's the big dill with Sonic's new slushy flavors? I, I had to it. get that in. Sorry, Diane. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, normally we talk about pickles with a burger, but how would you feel about washing your lunch down with a tall glass of pickle juice? I'm sure you can see where I land on this one. Beginning today, Sonic Drive in restaurants selling pickle juice slush drinks. This is for a limited time. The bright green drink is being described as sweet and tangy by a taster from Food and Wine magazine. Sonic says it wants to deliver adventurous and fun flavors. John and Nia. Of all the flavors you can come up with. Who came up with that one? So often, Diane, you'd tell, talk to us about fried chicken and donuts and spectacular, yes. delightful, sugary, sweet things. Pickle yes. juice, though, seems mm -mm. to fall a bit short, I reckon. Nope. No. Nah, <laughs> Not so much. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be the bearer of this news. I think we're all taking a pass on this one. Yeah, it doesn't uh. sound quite delightful. Especially not at this hour. Delightful? <laughs> Del oh, oh, I got that. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. But boom, boom, boom. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thank you. That was a Nate Tannenbaum worthy pun. Was it? I hope so. I don't know. We'll have to ask him later. <laughs> All righty. Enough pickles. A famous <laughs> horror movie coming back to the big screen. We'll tell you when Michael Myers is going to make his return in the new reboot of Halloween on 8 News Now.
Council on Problem Gambling. Now on Good Day, the Raiders Stadium is making progress. We take a look at where the project is right now. Plus, President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un are ready to meet in Singapore. We'll tell you what the president has warned he could do in the historic meeting. And an excessive heat watch has been issued. Sherry will let you know how hot it's going to get this week in her Weather Now forecast. 8 News Now, Good Day on the Valley's News Leader starts right now. Live, this is 8 News Now, Good Day. 5.30 Monday morning. Thank you very much for starting your week with us. I'm John Langler. And I'm Nia Wong. Kirsten Joyce has the day off. Big week ahead. We've got election day tomorrow mm -hmm. here for the primaries. And then after that, it's just smooth sailing and plenty of pickle juice. Yeah, hot, hot heat to go with it. <laughs> yeah, very, very hot. Excessive heat we're talking about coming up. Sherry, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, no reason not to get out to vote tomorrow, but I would suggest you do it early or maybe late in the day after work uh, before the polls close because we are looking at a pretty hot day Heat will increase quickly this week. So we got a little break over the weekend, but we had to suffer through those winds. And you probably had some yard work to clean up, uh, clean up stuff yesterday. We've got some nice, comfortable 70s. North Las Vegas back up to 81 with a little help of some wind. We've got a lot of rain in the east while the west stays dry and hot. We'll look at the country's uh, weather coming up in just a few minutes. But just look at the temperatures on the rise again today. We're wasting no time. 93 by 10 a.m., mid-90s, early afternoon. We'll We'll finish off your day a little bit hotter at back up into those low triple digits. Water and sunscreen. Take care of yourself and the pets. 530, we're on the roads with Nate on this Monday morning. See what's moving and not moving out there. Good morning, Nate. Morning, Sherry. We do have a crash. This is Las Vegas Boulevard around the Southern 215 Beltway. Does not appear to be really impeding traffic, not even on Las Vegas Boulevard. And it has nothing to do with the freeway. It's just around the 215. Three NHP cars. Looks like a car jumped the curb and went almost halfway through the median area. There's a tow truck there getting that thing out of the way. But traffic can get through to the right. Pretty sure this is southbound Las Vegas Boulevard around the 215 Beltway, around the uh, Town Square Shopping Center, just to be aware of the flashing lights. The rest of the freeway system is moving along in decent shape. And, John, I was surprised at your reaction to the uh, pickle juice slushy over there at Sonic. I thought, I thought you would relish it. <laughs> Man. You are the king of puns, Nate. <laughs> All right, I'll, have to think of one, I'll, I'll think of a response for later on, Nate. Okay. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll, You'll work on I'll that. I'll get my thesaurus out. <laughs> Well, with hockey season over, the spotlight now turns over to the NFL. Professional football is a few years from coming to town. But the Raiders Stadium is already taking shape. You can actually see the walls as you're driving along I-15. Hector Mejia is live at the construction site with an update on this huge project. Good morning, Hector. Good morning, John and Nia. We're told it's ahead of schedule, and thankfully workers haven't had any accidents during the construction of the stadium. Out here you can see a live look. Those cranes out there on the site, we're just right about now is when the workers start showing up, and we're told that every morning all workers have an exercise program where they stretch and do a few mild exercises to cut down on injuries. And here's a new look at the massive construction site, what it looks like right now. Pictures provided to us by the construction crews. The Oakland Raiders plan to start playing here in Las Vegas in 2020. Raiders owner Mark Davis recently did a walkthrough himself and was reportedly happy with the progress. It's a $1.8 billion project, 65,000 seats. A lot of steel is going up right now, and some of the bigger steel structures will be in soon. And in just a few months, in September actually, is when it'll look more like a stadium and less like a dugout hole. One interesting thing is that they have as much progress in eight months as the new Los Angeles football stadium has had in 14 months. And a lot of that has to do with the Vegas crew being able to blast into the ground. And this is here a sticker that already says Las Vegas Raiders here. And we're actually waiting to talk with uh, Tommy White. He's the head of the Laborers 872 Union to talk a little bit more about the progress they're doing out here. We'll have that ahead in the next hour. Reporting live near the I-15 in Russell, Hector Mejia, 8 News Now. Hector, thank you very much. A reminder that Election Day is tomorrow. Our Politics Now team is hosting a one-hour election special from 9 to 10 Tuesday night. And then we'll have a breakdown of all the winners on 8 News Now at 11. If you're still on the fence of who to vote for, check out our website, lasvegasnow.com. You can search the candidate's name. If we have interviewed that candidate, you will find the video. We have all the information for 172 voting center locations and hours on our website. 8 News Now, your local election headquarters for all things politics, on air and online. 
It's at LasVegasNow.com. 534 now. The stage is set in Singapore for the summit between President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The historic meeting is set for tomorrow. Kylie Atwood reports from Singapore. President Trump landed in Singapore and met with the prime minister there, a day ahead of his historic summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. It will be the first time a sitting U.S. president meets with the leader of North Korea. When Mr. Trump landed, he said he felt very good. And about 24 hours before the meeting with Kim, he tweeted, great to be in Singapore, excitement in the air. And though the president has said that this would be a get to know you meeting, that would be the first of many. I think it's a process. I've told you that many times before. I think it's not a one meeting deal. He has also warned that he will walk out if he does not feel things are going smoothly. Expectations are high. It's a one time shot. The Trump administration has long said its goal is the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. I feel that Kim Jong-un wants to do something great for his people, and he has that opportunity, and he won't have that opportunity again. Kim Jong-un landed here on Sunday, five hours ahead of President Trump, and he flew in on a 747 Air China plane, showing off China and North Korea solidarity. This will be a historic meeting, but Susan Rice, national security advisor under President Obama, warns that others have cut deals with North Korea only to see them fail. The problem is that at every turn, the North Koreans would make commitments and then break them. And we need to be mindful that that is, again, what might happen. Mr. Trump is slated to meet with Kim on Tuesday at 9 a.m. in Singapore. That's 9 p.m. Monday in Washington. Kylie Atwood, CBS News, Singapore. Demanding what's fair for America. That's how President Trump described his talks with world leaders at the G7 summit. The president warned America would win any trade war if anyone tried to retaliate against new tariffs on imported steel and aluminum. President Trump also stressed the summit was not hostile and blamed trade deficits on his predecessors. The 8 News Now team is asking for your help pitching in for our community. Our company, Next Star, is celebrating Founders Day this Friday, June 15th. In an honor of that, we're teaming up with Pal NV Foundation. It helps low-income families, senior citizens, veterans, and the homeless care for their dogs and cats by providing pet food and cat litter each month for free. So on June 15th, you can drop off your donations right here at the station from 6.30 in the morning to 5.30 in the evening. The address for Channel 8? 3228 Channel 8 Drive. Hope to see you then. The Golden Knights historic season is being put on display. Yeah, we'll tell you about the new exhibit going up here in the valley and what the exhibit organizers are asking people to donate. And IHOP is officially IHOP today. We'll let you know what the B stands for coming up. Before we go to break, here's a look inside our control room. They say the IHOP stands for... Ooh, I'll have to wait and find out. Mm -hmm. All right. Brad
It's Enough Said. Call Ed. 540. This is trending now. All right, this is pretty impressive. Florida meteorologist Lauren Nileski is going viral. Her co-anchors challenged her to solve a Rubik's Cube before finishing telling her complete forecast. She's talking and Rubik's Cubing at the same time. Check that out. Usually her weather lasts about three minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. Lauren was able to solve the Rubik's Cube in two and a half minutes, 30 seconds shy before she got to her seven-day forecast. She finished her forecast by saying, I think I need a pay raise. Give it to her. I think she's right. I think she might be in the wrong business. <laughs> oh, man. Impressive. Also trending, another horror reboot soon back in theaters. Hello, Michael. I have something you might like to see. Michael Myers is back. Actor Nick Castle returns for the role, donning for the first time the infamous mask. It's the first time since the original Halloween. Jamie Lee Curtis is also back as Laurie Strode. The movie is back in theaters October 19th. Wow. Yes. All right. Moving on to something less horror-y. Well, today is the day IHOP officially changes its name to IHOP. Just a few minutes ago, they announced what the B stands for on their new Twitter uh -oh. page. Yeah. Can you guess what it is? No. I never. <laughs> Burgers. Not anything to do with breakfast, which is what a lot of people thought. Last week, the restaurant chain announced the change. Burgers. Okay, let's keep looking at this. That just IHOP. makes no sense at all. Da, da, da. IHOP is now... International House, House of, of Burgers. burgers. So are they dropping breakfast? I don't know. Are they dropping pancakes? What if you have burgers for breakfast? It's just all so confusing. It really is. It's a Rubik's Cube. We need a meteorologist here to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if they have pancake-flavored burgers, <laughs> maybe they've got a niche in the market. Mm. Mm, well, the, buns, the buns are pancakes. See, I was wondering if the buns might be pancakes. Ooh, and a there's like syrup flavor, on the yeah. burger? Could be. Ooh. Come on, a short, that, a short the, stack burger. That sure. is the most competitive field <laughs> they could have picked <laughs> to change to. Exactly. What were they thinking? Uh, I, there's uh, there's a, more than a few burgers around town. Right, and good burgers too. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm. And honestly, I never thought of IHOP as a burger place. Well, well, I, no. I can't imagine they're suddenly going to throw away all their pancakes. But they, they had a niche there. They were there's a few competitors for breakfast, but a few. More, but there are millions. More Absol importantly, are they still going to honor National Pancake Day? Oh, <laughs> good question. Well, yeah. Yeah. I hop. And, and I hop. They used to have a free. You could get free pancakes on Pancake Day. Yeah. Are they going to drop that? Maybe it'll be National Burger Day. Yeah. I have to retrain my brain now. International House of Burgers. I don't know mm. if I can I do that. Hob. Mm. I hob. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I hob. Boy, that one's, that one's a real left turn for me. I was <laughs> not expecting burgers any way, shape, or form. I guess so. All right. Well, we're ready to be impressed, I hob. Let us, uh, let us have it. Okay, so we've got clear skies out there. We're going to have the heat this week, that's for sure. Temperatures have been really comfortable this morning in the 70s. 50s up there at Kyle Canyon. 60s over the uh, Mountain Spring Summit on the other side to the Pahrump Valley. Still in the warm 80s, Laughlin. 70s, Boulder City to Mesquite this morning. And we're on our way right back to triple digits. So we had low 100 Saturday. The wind, 35, 40 miles an hour, cooled us to the upper 90s yesterday, but boy, the heat will return and with a vengeance. 102 today, but we already have excessive heat watches posted for the desert areas. Thunderstorms rolling through the northern Rockies, the Midwest, and to the mid-Atlantic states where they expect maybe some flooding conditions, very heavy soaking rains for areas of the northeast today. We'll look for temps to increase quickly. In fact, valley temperatures Tuesday, Wednesday could be anywhere from 105 to maybe 112. Let's hope they don't get any hotter than that. And then along the Colorado River Valley could be up to 115. Death Valley could reach 120 this week. We'll see. That should be by Wednesday. Then the influence of what's now Hurricane Bob will be sliding up through a Baja and right into the desert. I don't think we're in for any rain in southern Nevada. Most of it should move over to the east and then cool off Arizona significantly with the possibility of rain. Boy, 106, 108 already along the Colorado River today. So we'll look for 102 and again, 
the place to cool off is the mountains. Not much in the way of wind today. And then the heat increases for the next couple of days. A slight downturn in the heat on Thursday, Friday, and then cooler 90s arriving for Father's Day weekend. All right, 545. Let's get to the roads with Nate. See what's moving out there. Still that crash sitting on Las Vegas Boulevard around the 215 Southern Beltway does not appear to be restricting a whole lot of traffic on Las Vegas Boulevard. Southbound, you got the left lane taken away. Be careful if you're doing that left turn from South Las Vegas Boulevard to get onto the 215 freeway. Uh, still trying to get one of the cars onto a tow truck there. Southbound I-15 around the southbound Las Vegas Boulevard, that is, around the 215. And I'm not sure why the traffic map is showing Warm Springs is closed around Las Vegas Boulevard. We'll check into that one. Otherwise, the rest of the freeway system, oh, you are for sure starting to get crowded into the spaghetti bowl. Happens every morning almost exactly around 5.30. The lanes are open. Just uh, tap on the brakes getting through there. John, Nia? Nate, thank you very much. A new internal report finds the Florida government stopped gun permit checks for a year because a state employee could not log into the system. This happened as the state noticed a significant surge in concealed carry permit applications. Florida doesn't allow the open carry of weapons, but more than 1.9 million people have permits to carry guns and weapons in public. That is if they are concealed. This comes as Florida is dealing with the aftermath of two school mass shootings. Actor Vince Vaughn was arrested in California for a DUI yesterday morning. Police say he was charged, also charged, with delaying or obstructing officers. A man in the car with Vaughn was also arrested on similar charges. They're no longer in jail. No details have been provided on bail or bond. Vegetarians will soon get an option at KFC, but you'll have to go across the pond to check it out. KFC in Britain will begin testing a vegetarian alternative to chicken later this year. The recipe is still in the early stages, but KFC says the new item is in line with its UK commitment to reduce calories per serving by 20% by 2025. In sports, justified defied the odds of the Belmont Stakes, taking the Triple Crown, the 13th in horse racing history. Justify won the Belmont starting on the rail. The last Triple Crown winner from that spot at the Belmont Secretariat nearly 45 years ago. Justify is also the second horse to capture the Triple Crown in the last three years. The Golden Knights' surprising success can be considered one of the greatest sports stories, and now the Valley wants to open up a new exhibit just for them. Lana Short plans to open up the new place at the Springs Preserve to turn first season experiences into lasting memories. How involved the players were in their new community really, I think, unified everyone to stand behind them as a team. Being a history-related museum, we really tell the stories of things that have happened in the past. So this will be one of the first times that we've encompassed a new event in a history exhibit. The new exhibit will open in 2020 to coincide with the Raiders coming to Las Vegas. Anyone interested in donating memorabilia can contact the Nevada State Museum. I think we already have a couple of Golden Knights exhibits in our newsroom right now. There's <laughs> That's Golden right. Knights stuff all over the we place. We can totally help them out here. <laughs> uh, 548 right now into Monday morning. An excessive heat watch has been issued for this week. Carrie's got those details on how hot it's going to get coming up in her seven-day forecast. And now a live look inside the studios at CBS This Morning. Gail, Nora, John getting all your top stories ready. That's all coming up at 7 o'clock.
You're watching the Valley's News Leader with Kirsten Joyce, John Langler, Sherry Swensk, and Nate Tannenbaum. This is 8 News Now. Good day. 5.52 on your Monday morning, a beauty pageant of a different kind over the weekend in Pahrump. It's called the Ms. Senior Golden Years. You have to be at least 60 years old to enter. Well, I was one of the judges, and it was a real pleasure meeting and getting to know all six contestants. Autumn Casterline, Pam Ranieri, Terry Rogers, Joanne Sturley, Sharon Crisp, and Mary McRory. The 2017 Miss Senior Golden Years, Mary Ellen Swarowski took her final walk and talked about accomplishing her goal, bringing a traveling mammogram van to the Pahrump area so women can get checked for breast cancer. And my hope is that they'll continue to serve the women of Pahrump and other rural areas of Nevada. Knowing my passion for the issue, it makes me smile when my friends report to me that they've received their annual checkups. It was a tough assignment for my fellow judges and myself. That's Brenda Kazmarek on the left and Audrey Johnson on the right. And behind us, the pageant director, B.J. Hetrick Irwin. The contestants were serenaded by a face familiar to Las Vegas television viewers from years ago. Tom Saida now owns a car dealership in Pahrump. And to cap off the evening, MC Steve Elliott announced the winner. And new Miss Senior Golden Years USA is Terry Rogers. It was a lot of fun. It was a packed oh, house that's so nice. at the showroom of the Saddle West Casino. Wow. And uh, it was a very difficult thing to do to pick a winner because they were all lovely. They all have platforms talking about what they would like to do for the community. Prop. Sure. Uh, a lot of them talk about uh, exercise and movement for uh, the older crowd. And, uh -huh. and Terry is, I think, going to be representing very well. Oh, right. very well. And, you know, your only faux pas is that you didn't get any snapshots of the swimsuit competition. Oh, yes, there was. Uh, <laughs> like, Which you said uh, was a throwback. Right. Miss America <laughs> dropped the swimsuit. Miss Senior Golden Years kept it. However... They were swimsuits from 1910, so full body, <laughs> old school, a lot of fun. It was, full it was dress. a robe, basically. Oh, wow. Kinda. That is so cool. Well, congratulations <laughs> to all the ladies. They looked beautiful. All righty, it is going to be a hot one out there today for sure. Uh, by the way, how about that Justify? I watched that race on Saturday. That was so exciting. Bob Baffert, the trainer, second horse in a row to uh, win the Triple Crown. Congratulations. May 1st to August 31st. That's our summer watering schedule. And even though we still haven't officially started summer, we will now in just about two weeks, uh, we are on that summer watering schedule because of these extra hot days. You can water any day but Sunday. But the best time to water is really before that hot sun starts rising or in the evening or nighttime hours. No watering between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Super wasteful for the evaporation. Sunny skies, ridge of high pressure builds in. Storm track is way up north, and temperatures are going to climb very quickly. Yesterday in the 90s, that's our only day for a while, 102 today. Heat watches uh, posted for Tuesday, Wednesday, 106, 107 officially. Some neighborhoods will get hotter than that. Then we trend the numbers down and drop into some nicer 90s thanks to a tropical system coming up from the south. So Dad's Day looks pretty pleasant at 95. Warm, but not horribly hot. 555, let's get to the roads. All right, we're getting you out the door before 6 a.m. with this crash still sitting on Las Vegas Boulevard around the 215 Southern Beltway. Basically, this is not too far away from the Town Square shopping mall. Doesn't appear to be blocking all the traffic, but there is the left lane block for northbound Las Vegas Boulevard uh, north of the 215. Be a careful of that and watch for those flashing lights. Rest of the freeway system, you're moving along all right, but plenty of uh, slow spots. Obviously, uh, southbound I-15 getting into the Spaghetti Bowl is going to be a tough ride for you, but the lanes are open. John Nia. All right, uh, Nate, thank you very much. Coming up here on 8 News Now, the mayor of Mesquite joins us here in studio. He explains the city's new election process during Monday mornings with the mayors. Plus, two items SeaWorld's no longer giving to customers at its parks across the U.S. That and more on 8 News Now. Good day. This is the Valley's News Leader. Good morning.